What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be covering everything that is revealed for Gundam The Witch from Mercury today. Now, they have updated the cover page for the uh, official website. It only says coming in 2022 for uh, the English site, while they actually said that they are going to be like yeah, airing every Sunday in... 28 NBS TBS affiliated TV stations nationwide in Japan. Simul, simul, a simulcast plan for outside of Japan. So I don't know what that means, but hopefully that does mean that this is not going to be region locked until like a year later where they were going to be uploading it on the Gundam channel or the Gundam Info channel. So hopefully that won't be the case, but the cover art over here does show us what to expect. And the world. Finally, some world building. So this is confirmed to be an alternate universe called the Ad Stella. An era when a multitude of corporations have entered space and built a huge economic system. A lone girl from the remote planet Mercury transfers to the Astacasia School of Technology run by the Burnet Group. Bernerit group which dominates the mobile suit industry. Her name is Suleta Mercury. With a scarlet light burning in her pure heart, this girl walks step by step through a new world. So yeah, uh, it doesn't really build up too much, but it just talks about uh, Suleta Mercury being transferred to the School of Technology. I, I, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that name again. But um, yeah, it does confirm that we are going to be getting a new universe. So uh, there is no cast or whatever. It only talks about the design directors or something like that. And uh, apparently this hasn't popped up yet. I'm going to be talking about the characters later on because I know you guys are looking forward to the mobile suits. Now, uh, apart from the Gundam era, we have three new reveals. These are for the main series, not the prologue. There is nothing in terms of settings that is announced for the prologue yet, but we do have something here. So we have Guel's D what is it? Uh, Guel's Delanza, piloted by Guel Jeturk. Um, I feel like this design is an absolute cock tease because it looks extremely similar to a roadie frame from Iron Blooded Orphans. I really like the fact that it has a feather on the uh, on the top of the helmets, which is definitely interesting. It's an eccentric color scheme. I'm all right on it. I'm really all right on it. And it looks like it uses a lance or sort of a spear as its main weapon. So it's more like a physical combat type. Not really too sure, but overall, the Dilanza. I really want to see the grunt variant because this is a commander type for girl Jeturk. So let's hope we see the uh, let's see, we'll hope we see the grunt version soon enough. Moving on, we have our second Gundam for the main series. This is the Gundam Faract, which is piloted by Elon Series. Now uh, it use it seems to be a, a long range combat type, judging from the long rifle that it's holding here. And as somebody pointed out on Discord, uh, the shoulder pieces over here are connected to the backpack, kind of like the double O risers, shoulder binders, or like, well, the double O sky, essentially. So uh, I feel like these things are kind of similar to the um, G Self Tricky Pack. If you remember what that is, it's basically kind of like a tractor beam illusion projecting pack because, well, it's only using that one episode, so there isn't really too much information regarding the G-Self Tricky Pack. But this is giving me a lot of similar vibes to the G-Self Tricky Pack. And I imagine it has some sort of similar function. I'm not really too sure whether or not I like the design that much. Mostly because of the leg design. It reminds me of something. Seriously, it does remind me of something. But I am just not sure about whether or not I like it. Judging by the official line art, the color scheme, I really do like it. But the rest of them, uh, not so much. I don't know what you guys think about it. And then finally, the last mobile suit reveal today is the Michaelis. Uh, piloted by Shaq Zanelli. Um, don't be fooled. I'm going to talk about him later on. Yes, but um, the sh the Michaelis looks like it's developed from the Bagheera bow, and it does look sort of knight-like, if you ask me. So I think some mobile suits are going to be taking inspiration from the medieval period. Now the arm cannon, I'm not too sure what to think of that, but I would presume that it will extend forward for a charged shot, or maybe kind of like the turn Exus manipulator, it could part fire beams and generate a huge beam saber. If I have to choose between this and the bigger bow, the Michaelis is definitely going to be the choice that I go for. 
And now, let's talk about the characters starting with our protagonist, Suleta Mercury. Now, according to the blurb here, she is a second year student in the piloting department in her new school, transferring from Mercury, and she's timid and somewhat lacks communication skills. Now, I cannot be quick to judge, but I have studied psychology, so she has struggles with communication, maybe just because it's just her personality trait, there is probably some sort of psychological explanation behind it. I'm not going to be quick to judge, but she does look, yeah, she's adorable. <laughs> like, I'm going to outright say it here, and there there are expression sheets in the official Twitter, she definitely does look adorable. Now, uh, she's the pilot of the Gundam Aerial developed in or Mercury, so yeah, it just so happens that she is named after her own native planet, it seems. So it's going to be pretty intriguing to see how she develops in terms of character. Moving on to the second character, Miorine Rembrandt. Rembrandt. So um, she is, well, obviously attractive. It does show in her character design, well done, and a distinguished and academically distinguished second year student in the management strategy department. So she is probably the more kind of like logistical person in the actual universe. I think she is going to be on uh, on Suleta's side, like she's going to be a part of the pro tag team, but she is not going to be the pilot because she is more logistical in her skill set. She's the only daughter of Delling Rembrandt, the president of the Bern Benerit group and chairman of the school's board. But thankfully, she has a strong rebellious feeling towards her father, so she is probably going to have some like family quarrels or something like that in terms of where to take the school and everything that is under the uh, Rembrandt family's management. Moving on to the third character, this is Guel Jeturk, affiliated with the Jeturk house. Of course, we did mention him before because we have his Delanza that we talked about. Um, he is more kind of like the brutish, like the more hot-headed character, judging from the appearance here. So kind of like Eugene from Iron-Blooded Orphans, I believe. So And the blurb here says, an heir to the Jeturk heavy machinery, one of the group's three branches, and a third year student in the piloting department. Guel has a rough temperament and is quick to anger, like I predicted. As the ace pilot of the Jeter Kals, he has absolute confidence in his own skills. Uh, if only he has these skills to show, so we, we can only wait to see whether or not his hot-headedness is actually warranted. Moving on, like we mentioned, Elon series affiliated with the Peel House. He is going to be piloting the Gundam Farak, as mentioned before. So according to the blurb here, he is the top pilot backed by PL Technologies, one of the group's three branches. So uh, what's the third branch? I wonder. Maybe it's going to be explained in the next uh, in the next character. Uh, a third year student in the piloting department, so probably the same class as a uh, Guel. Elon is a taciturn and solitary person who doesn't open up his heart to anyone in school. He has an interest to Suleta. So I don't know whether or not it's the romantic type of interest or just an in intrigue into Suleta's piloting skills in the Gundam Aerial. But he does look quite posh, if you ask me. He does remind me a lot of Megillus, like the quiet, collected, analytical type character. And finally, we have Shadikh Zanelli. Affiliated with the Grassley House, or the Grassley House, of course, the pilots of the Michaelis, but looking at his character, I really get strong mechanics feel. I don't, I don't know why, but it would not be the first time that pilot mechanics are introduced into the Gundam universe, but... I don't know, it could be just me. So the blurb here says, an adopted child of the CEO of Grassley Defense Systems, one of the group's three branches. A third year student in the piloting department who leads the Grassley house. Although still a student, Shadik has shown his skill in business too. He's a candidate for the next generation executive. Okay, so probably not a fighter mechanic, but but yeah, another logistics person who is more, he, he, who deals with more paperwork than uh, than dealing with mobile suits. We still have the anime to look forward to to see his character development. So overall, all these characters have solid bases to work with. And whether or not there are going to be superhumans in the Ad Stella universe, who knows? I really hope not. And that is basically it for the main series. Now let's talk about the prologue. Like I, like I mentioned before, all we have 
is nothing new but the further announcement of the Link the Universe event. So premiere screening in Japan forward episode prologue on July 14th at the Gundam Next Future Link the Universe event. So what that is, is basically an event that commemorates the broadcast of the Wish for Mercury. This is a translated copy by the way. So there is a event that is going to be held across all Japan's like Japan Gundam sites. No, I'm mistaken. Not all Gundam sites in Japan. All Gundam sites that are erected right now. So the life-size um, Gramps Gundam, the Unicorn Gundam, the Freedom Gundam in Shanghai, and the new Gundam FF. All of them are going to have simultaneous light shows in, commem in commemoration of the Wish for Mercury and as a part of the Gundam Next Future Link the Universe event. So a light show, good. There is going to be a Gundam Navi app which we can download to check up on Gundam news and stay up to date with it. So that is going to be extremely helpful. There is going to be a base series that is going to be holding a screening of the Witch for Mercury prologue. So yeah, I know the internet is going to leak that. <laughs> like somebody's going to have a camera to the screen and leak it out. So yeah, there is a higher chance that we can enjoy the prologue more than the actual anime itself. And the Gundam based pop-up tour centered around Gundam Molochus will be held all five venues across Japan, including the stuff from the Wish for Mercury. So, Ikebukuro, uh, Fukuoka, Hiroshima, Osaka, Nagoya, Sendai, and Sapporo. They're all going to be having the Gundam based pop-up events. So, if you guys plan to go to Japan or are living in Japan, you have your opportunity in seven different places. And apparently, in addition to the above venues, we plan to hold events in, yeah, yeah, the Parko, uh, Parko relationships. I'm going to talk about that later on. Details will be announced later. And, of course, we have some new limited items. Of course, gun limited Gunpla. Entry grade Gundam. Clear version Hajido Boshi. When is the app going to release? I don't know. They got delayed. Right in the last day of spring, frankly. Digging a deeper hole for any hopes of a Master Grade X2.0, a Master Grade kind of like, oh yeah, the, these special versions are from before. From, like, I don't want to mention it, but these are from before. Recirculation color, I don't really care. Oh uh, yeah, black eco plot and neon colors. So yeah, the recirculation colors over here. Finally, moving on to the official Twitter. Yeah, the Parko collaboration with Gundam. And uh, Parko Grand Bazaar. Collaboration item fair and a Gundam Next Future Gundam based pop up tour. Uh, not really too sure what that's all about because I don't really know what Parko is. But this image right here <laughs> looks so wholesome, don't you think? Like the granddaddy Gundam is patting his granddaughter on the shoulder. Like that is so wholesome. Now I know you guys, some of you guys disagree that the, the Gundam Aero looks feminine, but let's be frank, it definitely does look feminine. And we do have a preview of the Parko and Gundam crossover. It was where we had the Parko mascot board the Gundam Aerial, in which we actually get a preview of what the Gundam Aerial's cockpit actually looks like. Now, this actually reminds me a lot of Night and Magic. I don't know why, but it's really giving me some Night and Magic vibes. Maybe because they deliberately designed it to be like that, so that it feels like it's magic coursing through the Gundam's veins, I believe. But. I, I, I I'm not really too sure. However, the cockpit does look very, very nice. And of course, we do get some special merch from, well, with the Parko and Gundam crossover, in which we get the line, kind of like the line arch for the Gundam Aerial in a bag. That's basically going to be it for this video. Unfortunately, there is no new Gunpla announced for the Witch from Mercury, but I believe we will get those in the later on the later dates oh my god this looks cute this looks adorable the gundam aerial is doing shopping guys thank you all so much for joining me in this episode i know it may be a bit long but i'm so glad that we get more information for the witch from mercury before we actually get the prologue airing so that we know what the hell is going on in that series subscribe to the channel don't forget to like and comment and share your thoughts on the stuff that was announced today and Feel free to follow me on social media, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.